In today's presentation, we will cover all of the important information that you need to properly register for classes for next school year. Before we begin, I want to remind you that there are lots of different ways that you can stay in touch with us in the School Counseling Department. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. We also post everything that we do to our website. You can find us at pvchs.com under School Counseling. Also, every Friday, we send out an email with our weekly update. These weekly emails have lots of really helpful information about all kinds of topics, including high school graduation, events on and off campus, college admissions, careers, and so much more. You should definitely make a point to read this newsletter very carefully every week. Today, we're going to be discussing the course selection process. This is important to you for several reasons. First, this is how we make sure that you are in the proper courses next year. Your current teachers will make recommendations based on your academic record and performance in their classes. These recommendations will let us know the best next class for you in each of these subject areas. Next, this is how we will find out the electives you would like to have on your schedule next year. We make every effort to give students the electives that they want to take. We spend the whole summer building a master schedule and hiring teachers to teach the classes that you tell us you want to take. So once this process is complete and we start to work on that master schedule, there will be no more changes to elective courses. Finally, this is how you make sure that you have all of the classes that you need to meet your goals after graduation. Course selection is a four-step process. The first step is the registration presentation. This is what you're viewing today, giving you all of the information that you need to successfully complete this process. The next step is to complete your course selection sheet. You will receive your personalized sheet in fifth period on Friday. You will take this sheet to all of your teachers for their recommendations and to your parents for their approval. Your completed course selection sheet is due back to your fifth period teacher no later than February 23rd. When you return your sheet, your school counselor will review the classes that you've requested and we will enter them into SIS for you. If you do not return your sheet, your counselor will have to choose your classes for you. We really do not want to do this. We want you to have the classes that you most wanna take, but if you don't tell us what those classes are, we will pick courses for you. Keep in mind, if your counselor picks your classes, you will not be able to make changes to our choices. You're stuck with whatever we give you. So be sure to turn in your sheet to your fifth period teacher no later than February 23rd. Once all of the course requests have been entered into SIS, each student will meet with their school counselor individually to confirm their requests are correct. These meetings will take place in April. If you have any changes that you need to make, you will be able to do that at that time. Though we will be meeting with each of you individually in April, if at any time during this process you have questions, feel free to stop by to see your counselor. Students never need to make an appointment to speak with their school counselor, we're available in our offices every day before school, during lunch, or after school. So let's look at the materials that you'll need in order to complete this process. First, you'll need your course selection sheet. Again, this will be passed out to you by your fifth period teacher on Friday. Some classes will have prerequisites, which is a class that's required as a prior condition for you to take the next course you might need to check your transcript to be sure that you have taken the prerequisite. Also, some students will have classes that they want to retake, either because they didn't earn credit or because they want to receive grade forgiveness. By referring to your transcript, you can be sure that you sign up for the right semester of the right class. Finally, you have access to our curriculum guide. This is available at pvchs.com under School Counseling. The curriculum guide has details about graduation requirements, university admissions, and special programs. It also has a course description for every class that we offer, including information such as any prerequisites. Now we're going to review all of the components of the course selection sheet. Before we begin, there are some important things to note. Any class, either academic or elective, that is followed by a blank box requires a teacher recommendation. If there's no signature in the box, your counselor will not be able to add it to your schedule. Also, when you're selecting your electives, you should rank your choices by numbering them one through three. 
Counselors will do their best to make sure that the classes that you are most interested in taking are the ones that end up on your final schedule. Starting at the top of the course selection sheet, you will see that it has been personalized with academic details such as your current GPA and the total number of credits that you've earned so far. This will help you and your teachers pick the best classes for you. Underneath are some very important guidelines to follow. You and your parents should read through all of these very carefully. However, there are a few that I want to highlight. First, you should choose classes carefully. As I said before, once this process is complete, electives will not be changed. You will not be able to make schedule changes for elective classes next year. Next, failure to return your selection sheet by the deadline will result in courses being selected for you by your counselor. No changes will be permitted to these selections. Finally, any class that has a dollar symbol next to it is a class that will request a supply donation at the beginning of the year. If this is something that would keep you from wanting to take the class, you should choose a different one instead. Underneath the guidelines, there is a place for you and your parents to sign. Parents are an important part of this process, so you should take the sheet home and review it with them. Now we're going to look at the courses available in each department. These are the language arts classes available next year. Remember that any class with a blank box to the right requires a teacher recommendation. This means that your current English teacher will sign to recommend you for next year's English class. Next on the course selection sheet are the available math classes for next year. Your current math teacher will recommend the next class that best fits your math skills. Here are the available science classes. Again, your current science teacher will make a recommendation for you. Many science classes have pre or co-requisites. For example, in order to take regular level chemistry next year, you must have finished geometry by the end of this year. In order to take honors level chemistry next year, you must have already taken Algebra 2 honors or be registered for Algebra 2 honors next year. Next are the classes available in our social studies department. The core social studies classes required for graduation need a recommendation from your current social studies teacher. However, there are several social studies electives that do not. These classes are psychology, law studies and personal financial literacy, African and African American history, sociology and Holocaust history. Any students can choose to take any of these classes. Keep in mind, academic electives such as these are a great choice for college-bound students. Here you see the classes available in our foreign language department. Foreign language is not a high school graduation requirement. However, two years of foreign language is required to be eligible for admission to a four-year university and for some scholarships such as Bright Futures. If you haven't completed two years yet, we strongly encourage you to do so. Next, we have a section of the course selection sheet with our AP and ACE classes. These courses require an application, which we will discuss later in the presentation. If you apply and receive notification that you have been accepted to an AP or ACE class, you will need to see the teacher of that class for their signature. This is not your current teacher. In the left column here, you will find the AP or ACE teacher's room number. In the right column is the teacher's name. If you're in our CAP program, you have a section of the course selection sheet specific to your curriculum path. This is where your CAP teachers will sign. On the back of the course selection sheet, you will find our elective and academy classes. Here you see our multimedia and business classes. Any student can take an entry level course in this department. If you're interested in taking an upper level class, you will need your current teacher's recommendation. We offer an SAT ACT prep class for rising 10th and 11th graders. In this course, you will spend one semester with a math teacher and one with an English teacher preparing for these college entrance exams. Note the prerequisite. Rising 10th graders must have earned a level three, four, or five on the 9th grade FSA ELA and rising 11th must have passed the 10th grade FSA ELA. If you are still working on passing the FSA graduation requirement, we want you to focus on that test first before turning your attention to these other exams. 
Here you see electives available in the Language Arts Department. In Journalism 1, you will spend one semester learning to write for the newspaper and one learning about the yearbook. After this class, you can apply for upper-level journalism, which would allow you to serve on either the newspaper or the yearbook staffs. We also have a debate team. Note that the debate classes require attendance at Saturday competitions. See Mr. Bales for more information about our debate program. In our Fine Arts Department, entry-level courses do not require recommendation. However, upper-level art classes require the current art teacher's signature. We have three classes in this department. 2D art is drawing and painting. 3D art is sculptures, origami type paper art, mosaics, etc. And ceramics is working with clay. In the performing arts, theater one, beginning chorus, beginning band, and keyboard one, or beginning piano, are open to all students and do not require signatures. Your current theater or music teacher will make a recommendation if you're interested in upper level classes. The PE graduation requirement is one semester of personal fitness and one semester of a PE elective. Students who haven't met this requirement yet can add it to their schedule next year. Students who have met the graduation requirement but would like to have PE again can choose the class as one of their electives. No recommendations are required for our PE classes. All Park Vista students can take the entry-level courses in our Auto Academy. We have two classes available in this department. Auto Maintenance and Light Repair is the inside of the car, things like brakes, engine repair, etc. Auto Collision is the outside of the car, painting, welding, dent repair, and so on. Interested ninth graders are able to apply for either the Auto Academies or the Medical Academy. Applications can be found on the school district website and must be submitted by this Friday, January 28th. Rising juniors and seniors with at least a 3.0 GPA can sign up to be a student aide next year. Student aides work with a teacher or help out in one of our offices. There is no grade or credit awarded for this class. However, you will receive 75 hours of community service for each semester that you're an aide. Students taking dual enrollment courses can choose to take a period off in their Park Vista schedule. If that's your plan, you will indicate it on your course selection sheet here. To be eligible for dual enrollment, you must have at least a 3.0 GPA and college ready test scores on the SAT, ACT, or PERT. Except for the classes offered to our Medical Academy students, all dual enrollment classes take place on the college campus. It's important to note that dual enrollment courses become a permanent part of your college transcript and can impact college admissions and financial aid eligibility. So the decision to take these classes should be made very carefully. If you're interested in taking dual enrollment either during the summer or fall of 2022, you should attend our dual enrollment student assembly. This assembly will be held on February 8th and should be attended by both new and returning dual enrollment students. To sign up for the assembly, click on the link in our weekly update emailed out every Friday. Rising juniors and seniors requesting to have a no class next year must have their parents sign the course selection sheet. If your parent does not sign to give their approval, your school counselor will not be able to add a no class to your course requests. Note the requirements to be eligible for a no class. A rising junior must have a 2.0 GPA and at least 14 credits by the end of sophomore year in order to have a no seven. A rising senior must have a 2.0 GPA and 19 credits by the end of junior year to have a no seven. You must have 20 credits by the end of junior year to have a no six. It's extremely important to remember that having classes off in your schedule makes you less competitive in the college application process. For each no class, that is one less rigorous academic course that you will have on your final transcript. Students choosing to take an FLVS class in place of a Park Vista class have two options. You can choose to work on your class in one of our on-campus labs. You can also choose to have a period off in your schedule to work on the class at home. Either choice requires the name of the class that you will be taking and a parent's signature to approve. 
Please note that we do not recommend virtual courses on or off our campus to replace courses that are taught at Park Vista or just to get a period off. Virtual online courses are very rigorous, have strict pacing guidelines, and Park Vista has no control over when you will get into the course or when you will complete the course. Students selecting to substitute a class period for an FLVS course are expected to complete a semester of FLVS credit for each substituted semester by the conclusion of the semester. Failure to complete FLVS credit substituted for a class period on campus within a timely manner may result in future FLVS periods being limited or rescinded. We have found that many students who choose to drop Park Vista classes for FLVS classes fail to complete their online coursework. This ultimately leads to them being behind in graduation requirements. So again, we do not recommend this option for students. Now we're going to look at your graduation requirements in more detail. In order to earn your high school diploma, you must complete 24 credits, earning a 2.0 GPA or a C average overall. You must pass the 10th grade FSA ELA and the Algebra 1 EOC. You must also complete 20 hours of community service and at least one online course. Listed here are the specific 24 credits required to earn your high school diploma. You can find this list online in our curriculum guide. Remember, foreign language is not a high school graduation requirement. However, two credits of the same foreign language are required to enter the state university system and to earn the medallion and scholars level of the Bright Future Scholarship Program. We encourage all ninth and 10th graders to take both the FSA and their EOCs very seriously. Performance on your FSA ELA this year will determine whether you will be required to take intensive reading next year. In addition, you will need FSA and EOC scores of four or five to be able to enroll in many of our honors, AP or ACE courses. 11th graders should take the school day SAT in March very seriously. Students who haven't passed the FSA ELA can use this test to earn a concordance score for graduation. This is also a free opportunity to take the SAT for college admissions. Finally, you can use this administration to earn college ready test scores for special programs such as dual enrollment. If you haven't completed your online course for graduation, you should make a plan to do that as soon as possible. Listed here are some suggestions of courses that can be completed quickly and easily. Be aware that the way the requirement is written, you must complete a full course. This means one semester of a one semester course or both semesters of a course that has two semesters. Once you have signed up for a class at flvs.net, your counselor will approve the course. Every school day, counselors log into our FLVS portals to make approvals. You should check your account daily to see when you have been assigned a teacher. Once you have, contact your teacher as soon as possible to start. After you complete the class, FLVS will send us your final grade directly. We suggest that students meet the online and community service requirements by the end of sophomore year. This is because many privileges for juniors and seniors are tied to being on track to graduate, including having these requirements met. Incoming 11th graders interested in parking decals must have their 20 hours of service completed. Incoming 12th graders must have their community service and online course requirement met in order to purchase a parking decal. In addition, seniors will not be able to participate in activities such as grad bash or prom without meeting these requirements. There are two options for students who have failed a course required for graduation or who want to earn grade forgiveness for a class they earned a D or an F in. The first is FLVS. With this option, you can take either regular or honors courses. This option is available to students anytime, including the summer, and can be completed from home. Edgenuity is the second option. This credit recovery program is a condensed version of the courses and is designed for students who are behind in credits and not on track for graduation. This option requires students to be assigned to one of our on-campus labs. Because Edgenuity is a credit recovery program, it's not recognized by four-year universities, Bright Futures, or NCAA. Students with these post-secondary goals should use FLVS to make up credit. 
We have reviewed the credits required for high school graduation. However, these credits alone will not meet the requirements to be eligible for admissions to a university. Here you see those minimum requirements. You can find this list in our online curriculum guide. Important to note, in order to be eligible for admissions, you must complete at least two years of a foreign language and a minimum of 18 academic credits. However, keep in mind that as competitive as college admissions has become, the minimum requirements are often not enough to earn a student an offer of admission. We encourage all students to take as many rigorous academic courses as they are capable of being successful in. This infographic comes directly from the FSU website. The average Seminole freshman has completed much more than the minimum requirements for admission. For example, while only three science credits are required to be eligible, the average student who is offered admission to FSU has taken five science courses in high school. When preparing for admission to a four-year university, your high school schedule should increase in rigor each year. Here is a quote from a senior research analyst with the U.S. Department of Education. Rigorous curriculum is a greater factor in determining college graduation rates than class standing, standardized test scores, or grade point average. What this means is that universities know that students who take rigorous high school classes are better prepared to be successful in their college coursework. Therefore, college admissions officers are looking for students who have filled their schedules with rigorous academic courses. Colleges and universities are looking for students to take at least five academic courses in their schedule each year. An academic class is one that is offered in the language arts, math, science, social studies, or world languages departments. Again, keep in mind that if you have any periods off in your junior or senior schedules, you are less competitive in the college application and scholarship process. As popular as it is to have no classes 11th and 12th grade, this might not be the best option for you based on your ultimate post-secondary goals. Students and parents interested in AP, ACE, or dual enrollment classes next year should attend our presentation tomorrow, Thursday, January 27th at 6 p.m. Our program will begin in the auditorium with an overview of all three of these acceleration programs and details about the application process. After this, we will have a showcase of courses where students and parents can meet with teachers of specific classes to get more information about the course curriculum and requirements. All students at Park Vista can work toward earning an ACE diploma. Cambridge ACE courses are divided into four groups listed here. To earn an ACE diploma, you must pass a minimum of seven ACE exams with at least one from each of the first three groups and all within three school years. Here we have the classes offered at Park Vista listed by their Cambridge group. You can find this information on the School Counseling website. For more details about these classes, please join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. Juniors interested in the ACE diploma must have taken and passed the ACE English language exam in 10th grade. You should also either have passed or currently be in at least two other ACE courses. Interested sophomores must currently be in ACE English language. You should plan to register for at least ACE US History and ACE English Literature next school year. Here are some general guidelines to help you as you are completing your course selection sheet. The recommended courses for 12th graders are one credit of English, economics and American government, and four or five elective credits. Remember, college-bound seniors should have a minimum of five academic credits on their senior schedule. This should include a math and science course. Rising juniors should plan on taking one English class, one math class, one science, U.S. history, and three elective classes. Tenth graders will take English, math, science, world history, and three elective credits. Remember, your completed course selection sheets are due to your fifth period teacher no later than February 23rd. If you do not turn in a course selection sheet, your counselor will pick your courses for you, including all of your electives. If we pick your classes, 
you will not be able to make any changes to our selections. We want you to be able to make your choices, so please be sure to turn in your sheet by February 23rd. Students with questions can see their school counselor before school, during lunch, or after school any day. Unfortunately, with caseloads of approximately 500 students each, it's impossible for school counselors to offer individual parent conferences regarding registration. However, we're happy to answer parent questions by phone or email. Thanks for your attention today. We look forward to seeing you in April.